Hi class, in lesson 5.4 you will be learning about modeling ratios. Learning target for today, you will use double number lines and diagrams to solve problems involving ratios. Key term to look for in lesson 5.4, double number line. Turn to page 334, problem 1, breakfast before activity. Carrie and her friends are going hiking. Carrie invites her friends to meet at her house for a quick breakfast before heading out on their hike. Carrie wants to offer muffins to her friends. She knows that one muffin combo has four muffins that can feed four people. Please answer number one with your group members. Here are two examples of what your models could look like, showing the relationship between the muffin combo and the number of people that it will feed. Please note that in both models, there are four people to one muffin combo. Turn to page 336, problem 2, oh yes I am the muffin man. In problem 1, you drew models to determine the relationship between two quantities. You can also use a double number line to visualize relationships. A double number line is a model that is made up of two number lines used to represent the equivalence of two related numbers. Each interval on the number line has two sets of numbers and maintains the same ratio. The Muffin Man Bakery offers two types of muffins, corn or cinnamon raisin. <clears throat> it costs the bakery $2.50 to make three corn muffins. The ratio of $2.50 to three corn muffins is shown here on the double number line. You can see other equivalent ratios of cost to number of corn muffins by continuing to label each interval. Remember, the ratio has to be maintained when labeling each number line. Please answer number one and number two with your group members. The first new ratio is $5 to six corn muffins made, and the second new ratio is $7.50 to nine corn muffins made. For number two, the interval for the cost number line is $2.50 and the interval for the number of corn muffins made number line is three. In lesson 5.5 you will be learning about using tables to represent equivalent ratios. Learning targets for lesson 5.5 you will create tables of equivalent ratios and use known values in a table to determine equivalent ratios. Turn to page 342, problem 1, earth weight to moon weight. Gravity is a natural force that attracts objects to each other. Gravity is the pull toward the center of an object like the earth, a planet, or the moon. Your weight on the earth is the measure of the amount of gravitational attraction exerted on you by the earth. The moon has a weaker gravitational force than the earth. The ratio of weight on earth to weight on the moon is approximately 60 pounds to 10 pounds. You can use ratio tables to show how two quantities are related. Ratio tables are another way to organize information. The table shown represents three equivalent ratios of weight on earth in pounds to weight on the moon in pounds. The ratio of 60 pounds on earth to 10 pounds on the moon is given. Turn to page 343. Please answer number one and number two with your group members referring back to the table on page 342. And remember to think about how the numbers in the table can relate to each other. For number one, both parts of the ratio 60 pounds to 10 pounds were divided by 2 in order to get 30 pounds to 5 pounds, so your scaling down factor was 2. For number two, one thing that you could have done was multiplied the ratio of 30 pounds on earth to 5 pounds on the moon by 3. Your scaling up factor would be 3. 
Turn to page 344 and let's take a look at Howard's example. Again, one way to determine an equivalent ratio in a table is to scale up. Howard multiplied 60 and 10 by 2 in order to get the equivalent ratio of 120 to 20. His scaling up factor was 2. If we look at K's example down on the bottom, another way to determine equivalent ratios in a table is to add corresponding ratios to get an equivalent ratio. She added 30 and 90 to get 120, and she added 5 and 15 to get 20. Turn to page 346 and answer number 5 with your group members. For number 5, one of the calculations that you could have used was to add 60 and 90 to get 150 and 10 and 15 to get 25. You could have also multiplied 30 times 5 and 5 times 5 in order to get 150 to 25 for the equivalent ratio. Your scaling up factor is 5. Problem 2 on page 346 asks, how many pizzas should I order? The 6th grade pizza party is planned for tomorrow. Tracy is in charge of ordering the pizza for 450 students. The pizza parlor said two pizzas will serve nine students. Tracy made a ratio table to help her determine how many pizzas to order for 450 students. Take a look at the ratio table here, and please answer number one with your group members. First, Tracy multiplied both the number of pizzas and the number of students by 5 to get a product of 10 pizzas for 45 students, so her scaling up factor was 5. Then she multiplied 10 pizzas by 10 to get 100 pizzas, and she multiplied 45 students by 10 to get 450 students. So her scaling up factor is 10. Turn to page 347. Please answer number 2 with your group members. Explaining your calculations will be drawing the arrows in your ratio table to show how you determined the equivalent ratios. Let's go through each ratio step by step so that you can see the calculations. For 30 to 135, I multiplied 10 times 3 and 45 times 3 to get my equivalent ratio. For the ratio of 60 to 270, I multiplied 30 times 2 and 135 times 2 for my equivalent ratio. For the ratio of 50 to 225, I subtracted two corresponding ratios. 60 minus 10 gives me 50, and 270 minus 45 gives me 225. For the ratio of 200 to 900, I multiplied 2 by 100 and 9 by 100. And for the last ratio of 300 to 1,350, I added two corresponding ratios. 100 plus 200 gives me 300, and 450 plus 900 gives me 1,350. This will conclude today's lesson on modeling ratios, double number lines, and using tables to represent equivalent ratios. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.